Hello and welcome to this episode of Leisure Luke. This week I've been working on these sort of spring systems. Uh, I want to make a puzzle box. Like a really interesting puzzle box that requires a lot of steps that you have to do in order. Um, I want there to be some code on the outside that you can crack which helps you solve the puzzle box. If you haven't seen puzzle boxes like this, here's a few clips from Chris Ramsey, who does a lot of these online puzzle solves. The guy is super interesting to watch, and I get sucked into watching hours and hours of Chris Ramsey solve puzzles. Start with this, I'm just gonna intuitively, hopefully, throw some random ones down so that we... Huh? Oh. Oh. Uh... What are we supposed to do here? Oh, look what we have here. This was a locksmith named Pop, who crafted the most genius of locks. Broken his labyrinth, home to a beast. Let's start the timer, let's go. So we got this thing here, this doesn't move, none of this moves, oh. Oh, These puzzles, doesn't... they're usually handmade, they're wood or metal or plastic or balsa wood. And I thought, well, geez, making this out of 3D printed material would be perfect. It's super easy and you could do all sorts of functions, right? It could spin, it could click, you could have springs. And that's what led me to make springs. I thought, how quality of a field can you actually get out of a spring that's just 3D printed? Can you 3D print a spring button that feels nice? Uh, or will it always feel cheap and, and plasticky? Uh, so I went to work and I started with this, which is a little case of six springs and six buttons. They were just hand drawn by me in CAD. All of these models are available at Thingiverse.com. Click the link below to download them. They have different tolerances, different amount of support along the sidewalls, and obviously the springs are different shapes. I did this just to get a rough idea of what the ideal spring shape might be in 3D printed springs. Eventually I played with different thicknesses of the springs, uh, different widths. At 0.4, which is my nozzle width, the springs didn't print nice. And at 1.2, the springs were always too stiff for what I was eventually thinking I would use them for. I also was interested in some of the really pointy springs don't work that well because of the way the spring prints around the sharp corner. So what ended up being ideal was either a big wavy type spring or like a four peak symmetrically mounted wide spring, which is what I ultimately ended up using. Um, but it was really interesting. I enjoyed playing with this little card. Honestly, this was my favorite print the day I printed it. I walked around the house and I was like, this is my favorite print! Just because it's it's interactive, it feels higher quality than other things I've printed off Thingiverse. And uh, I learned a lot just from watching the spring get pushed in, from feeling how the feeling was. And I realized I wanted a couple of things. This was the spring width I wanted. I landed on a spring height of 2.2 millimeters. Uh, and I did try springs at 1.8, 2.0, all the way up to 3.0. Um, and then I even made a couple of TPU springs. And you can see I ended up making those quite a bit thicker. I'm not sure if that'll focus, but that's a quite a bit thicker spring for TPU, which is a flexible filament. I can talk more about that in another video. The two models I have for download, the first is the spring box, I told you about that. The second I've uploaded available for download is this five piece uh, spring and release system. It will now latch when you push it in and release when you push it out. It's a pretty good feeling spring. Another thing is that this little body that everything resides in, that everything clips into, I call that the PV2, which is the platform version 2. That's made to be sort of modular. So as I develop different functions for these buttons or springs or slides or twisty things to do, I can test them all in the same 
platform box container. And that's because eventually I'm gonna put them all, hang on one second, into this, which is just a bigger extruded version of the platform V2. The goal is there will be something in the middle and then you'll be able to solve the puzzle by pushing buttons and flipping switches and sliding slides and rotating keys and you'll solve this puzzle box and then you can open it and once you've opened it well nothing will happen but you can put it back together push all the buttons back in and the puzzle will be fully reset by itself which is huge in these complicated puzzle boxes 3D printing and puzzles have gone hand in hand for a long time, and I'm surprised there aren't more puzzle boxes out there on Thingiverse that I've been able to find. But if you can find a puzzle box for me to print on Thingiverse, or if you can find a good spring switch mechanism for me to print, please leave a comment below. I'm desperate to find more interactive, good feeling button switch systems that I can incorporate into this puzzle box. And then I added a little artwork to the bottom of the puzzle box uh, that shows the five aces, which of course are four aces and the deuce is wild. Bonus item in this video, I'm going to spray paint the bottom of this and wipe it a little bit and try to get that lettering to show up better. Let's go spray paint it. So this plan is pretty simple. I'm gonna spray it with spray paint and then wipe it off using a, a paper towel. I have done this before, just never with plastic. So here we go. And the idea is that the paint will mostly stay in the grooves and I can mostly wipe the paint off the surface. Give it sort of a better depth. My dad would say, you got a real mess going there. And he wouldn't be wrong. I will keep practicing this spray paint technique to get letters to show up better. And uh, if at any point I get it looking good, I will make a video on, on how exactly I did it. But I think maybe wiping it with lacquer thinner or something after would be better to clean the, the main surface off. I don't know, we'll keep trying. Back to the video. All right, let's talk through assembly quick. So the first spring box is printed with just these two parts. This spring part will fold over and slide in here and I have zero tolerance on these edges uh, so you may end up needing like I can't I can't push this all the way up so what I use is just a, a little pliers to help squeeze that up Very nice Same on the other side and that's it you're uh, now able to test some of your buttons. And they don't have a bottom, so they will spring that way, but if you just sort of set it on a surface, you'll, you'll get the idea, and you'll be able to watch how the springs each move. The second spring box has these five pieces that you will print, and it's a little more difficult to assemble. First, you have to get this spring into the PV2. And that, that is a little tricky because it doesn't go in very nice. So what you kind of have to do is compress it all inside of the box. So you can slide it down. Once you have it in, you've got to lift up the back part here. So you can slide it in like that. See how it fits? And uh, the sides here have 1.1 millimeter of tolerance, so, so it's a pretty snug fit. Um, this space around these buttons on the front and back, that is 0.3 millimeters tolerance, which is why that's written there. 
Okay, now to put in our latch mechanism, you're going to put on the side where it says PV2, that is where uh, this piece is going to go. And it slides in just like the other. And then this piece, which holds the back end of the latch spring, slides in over here. It actually feels like it clips in pretty nicely. And then I do it, I, I thread this all the way through. This goes through mostly pretty well. And, and again, to get this square to line up, you can push it in. I like to use a pliers to make sure that it's fully seated in its place. And um, this wouldn't be the worst part to glue if you were thinking about putting a little glue on the back of the black tab there, or whatever color you printed in. That would help uh, hold that in place. And that's it, you're fully assembled. It will now latch when you push it in, and release when you push it out. It's a pretty good feeling spring. It's um, it's preloaded, which means there's even in its fully extended position, there is some tension on it. And then this is close to flush until it latches and then it sticks out just a little bit. But it's the the best feeling mechanism that I've been able to design yet. That's it. I hope you can assemble it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it works for you. Um, and and again, leave me any feedback that you have. This has been a week worth of trial and error, and I thought I would leave you, my 98 subscribers, with uh, a few things you can go online and print. Any feedback, any thoughts, and any files you want to share, please send them my way. Eventually I'm going to have a fully assembled puzzle box that you can download and print yourself. And uh, someday I'm going to make a puzzle box interesting enough for Chris Ramsey to want to solve himself. And if anybody has good ideas of what I should incorporate into a puzzle box like that, I'd love to hear it. Thanks for tuning in to this uh, different type episode of Leisure Loop. Leave a comment, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.